Hi, thank you for joining us today at C3 Church. Before you click off or start multitasking, I want to fill you in on what's about to take place. We have a powerful, intimate worship set created exclusively for you because you matter. And just because we can't gather together, we can still gather virtually and spiritually. So let's get started. With all of the uncertainty surrounding us right now, we're so excited for Pastor Eddie's new series, Hope for Tomorrow. We would like to encourage you to invite your friends to watch with you. So if you're watching on Facebook, create a watch party. Or if you're watching on YouTube or our c3ps.church website, text your friends the link and encourage them to watch as well. We would love to get this message of hope out to everybody who may need it at this time in their lives. President Trump called today a national day of prayer. So if you don't mind, I'd like to read out of Psalm 91 verses one through seven. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. So let's take a moment to pray for our nation and our communities. Father God, I thank you that in this time of uncertainty, that we can look to you as our peace and our covering, Father God. We pray health and healing to everyone in our nation, Father God. We pray for protection and deliverance and safety. And Father God, we lift up your incredible healing anointing, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, to cover our homes, our churches, our communities, and our nation. And we speak life and we speak peace right now in, to, in the name of Jesus to everybody, Father, that is living with any sort of uncertainty or fear or unrest. We thank you, Father God, for your protection, for your deliverance and your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining me for this. Well, let's go ahead and head into the sanctuary for some incredible worship.
Welcome C3 Palm Springs. I'm Pastor Eddie. We're so excited that you are joining us today. Now, in light of everything that's going on in the world, we have decided to do church, but we've decided to do church in a different way. We've decided that we wanted to, as a, as a congregation, we wanted to, yes, walk by faith, but at the same time, we need to use wisdom in all that we do. And as a staff, as an executive team, we decided that this was where God was leading us. We believe that this is where God was directing us. Yet we stand and walk by faith, but yet at the same time, all of us need to walk in wisdom. So I want you to know that we are so glad that you're joining us today. Because the word of God is going to go forth either way. You're going to get blessed today. I believe it with all my heart that the anointing of God is is speaking to you right now, whether you are at home, whether you're at a coffee shop, whatever you are, I believe that God's going to do something powerful and amazing. I'm hoping that you're enjoying the live stream worship experience so far, but there's so much more to come. I'm going to minister a little message right now uh, for you. We're going to get into some more worship, but I just want to pray and uh, believe that God's going to minister to you today. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the word of God that's about to go forth. Lord, I pray that you would anoint me, that the Holy Spirit would use me and speak through me, Lord. Father God, through the sound waves, through the airways, Lord. Father God, and minister and touch and change lives. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said, amen. Well, like I said, we as a church, we are a faith-filled, believing church. We believe in the gifts of the Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in the direction that God leads us. And, uh, and a, lot of, a lot of times we need to realize that with faith comes wisdom. I just want to share a scripture with you in, in Matthew in the, in the second chapter. The wise men, they came and they brought the gifts when Jesus was born. They brought the gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They were about to depart and go back home, back to their homeland, and God came to them in a dream. And the Bible says, being divinely warned. You know, that, that, that's fascinating to me because they were being divinely warned. I think sometimes God warns us, and then if, he gonna, if he's going to warn us, he's going to give us direction. What was he being warned from? He said they were being warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod. See, they were about to go the same way, and they were about to get go to Herod, but you know what? God is saying, no, 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 no. You could walk into danger. You could walk into that place, and God's a sovereign God. He could have made it all work out, but he says, I'm not going to allow you to go there. He says, I don't want you to return to Herod, and they departed for their own country in another way. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're walking uh, by faith, but yet we're using wisdom. With that in mind, I am so excited about where God is leading us. Today, we're starting a new series. It's called Hope for tomorrow. Isn't that what we need right now, today? We need hope for tomorrow. There's a lot of people that are listening to this, the media and social media and the, the, the news and all the, the, the rumors of everything that's taking place. But you know what? As Christians, as believers, 
we know that in Christ Jesus, we have hope for tomorrow. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is believing as what's going to come tomorrow. Faith is believing that God is in control. Faith is believing and knowing that, you know what, we don't need to fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and a power and a sound mind. And we need to trust him in these days. And that's why we as a church, we are believing God by faith that there's hope for tomorrow. We don't have to fear. We don't have to worry. We're using wisdom as we move forward in the future. You know, I have a, I have a quote here. It says, people have great tomorrows because of their decisions made today. People have great tomorrows. You want to have a great tomorrow? What are the decisions that you are making today? Are you choosing to operate in fear? Are you choosing to operate in doubt? Are you choosing to operate in unbelief? Or are you choosing to believe in faith, knowing that there's hope for tomorrow because the decisions for your decision you make today is going to be a great tomorrow? Even Jesus says in Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse 34, he says, Therefore, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. Isn't that what so many people are trying to put on us? Their beliefs about the worry about what is happening, what's taking place. You know what? They, they don't have a God of the supernatural. They don't have a God of the miraculous. As believers, you know what? We're not going to worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has its own worries about, it worries about its own things. We have faith. We have God. Our God is bigger than any coronavirus. Our God is bigger than any disease or pestilence. Our God is bigger than anything. And we need to know that we operate in faith because we have hope for tomorrow. Now, I don't know if you realize this, and I'm going to say something. You're probably going to try to think about it, but you're going to have to go back and kind of replay this. But your today will be tomorrow's past and yesterday's future. Today is going to be tomorrow's past and yesterday's future. And you say, well, what does that mean? I want you just to ponder that and think about that, write it down, because it's, it's kind of an interesting statement that I came up with. But hope for tomorrow happens because of a great today. That's what we're here for. We, we're here to minister the word of God, to have a great today, to be filled up with faith today so that you have a great tomorrow. And I love what it says in Joshua, the third chapter. Joshua got his assignment from God. He says, I want you to go and possess the promised land. I want you to go and, and march around Jericho. God gave him his marching orders. And the Bible come along and says this. And Joshua said to the people, he said to them, sanctify yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. But it's amazing because he did something today. What was his today? He told the people, let's sanctify ourselves because tomorrow God is going to do wondrous things. God is going to do a miraculous thing. But today, today we have to worry about today. We have to take charge of today. We have to have faith for today. And he said we need to sanctify ourselves. We need to set ourselves apart. We can't go into the, the, the fear mode. We can't go into what everybody else is saying. But we have to stand up today and sanctify. What does it mean to sanctify yourselves? It means to set yourself apart. They set themselves apart because God was going to do something miraculous. God was going to do something amazing. And so he did something today that made their tomorrow a wondrous and, and a wonderful work that God did. And they did what God has called them to do. And the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. The Bible says in Lamentations in the third chapter, verse 22 and 23, through the, the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. God's, what's God's mercies? God's mercy is his kindness beyond our expectation. And through the mercies of God, because of the mercies of God, we are not consumed. We will not be consumed by any disease. We will not be consumed by wickedness. We will not be consumed by any evil that is spoken over us or that seems to come upon us because of the Lord's mercy. And the Bible says there they are new every morning. What's new every morning? His mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Just like the song we, we sang, his promises still stand. Great is your faithfulness. His promises still stand today. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his mercies endure for, for eternity. And his mercies are new every morning. So today we have the mercies of God. Today we're focusing on his kindness and his goodness, knowing that we won't be consumed, but we know that great is his faithfulness. Now, I'm going to share a story with you in the Bible. And... Uh, 
I'm going to kind of explain what's taking place, and then we're going to go into some scriptures and kind of share a few things with you today. We look at the world today, and we think, oh, wow, what, what's taking place? What's going on? But if you look in the Bible, man, there was famines, there was leprosy, there was disease, and there was so much stuff that has taken place, and, and a lot of times it's so much, 100 times worse than we would ever face on this planet, in this earth, in our lifetime. But there's a story in 2 Kings, if you want to get your Bibles out, 2 Kings in the 6th chapter. And in verse number 24, I'm just going to uh, preface and highlight a few key points, and then we're going to go into some truths on what we can learn from this uh, story that God is illustrating for us today. In verse 24, it says that and it happened that, that ben, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, gathered all of his armies and went to besiege Samaria. What does that mean? He went to conquer Samaria. He went to capture Samaria. He went to take everything that they had, all their food, all their possessions, all their gold, all their animals, all their livestock. He came and he besieged them. On top of that, the Bible says that there was a great famine in the land. So, yes, they came and they besieged them, but yet then there was a famine in the land where they could not continue to grow. So obviously when there's no famine, uh, when there's a famine, there's no food and there's no water and everything begins to deteriorate. Everything's to, everything becomes bad. And the Bible says that they begin to uh, be in want, that they begin to eat donkey heads that were sold with, at an absorbent amount of money. The Bible says that, that a donkey's head was sold for eight shekels, probably at the estimate of $500 in today's economy. And then it said they were eating dove droppings, bird poop. Yes, I, I said it, bird poop. They were eating bird, what? Yeah. And they were buying that for $30 for two ounces of bird poop. Ridiculous. It's crazy. Today we look at and see people like, oh, they're, they're so nervous about the, the toilet paper and they're so nervous about the other things. But here they are. They're, they're doing, they're eating bird poop and they're eating donkey heads. It even got to the place where a lady, she was so, so disturbed about what was going on. And she said to the king as he was walking on the wall, he says, she says, help me, my lord, O king. He said, what am I going to do? If God can't help you, what am I supposed to do? And he was so disturbed about what was taking place. He's a king. A king is supposed to take care of his people. And she's all, I, I'm so worried. I, well, I need help. And he says, well, well, what has happened? And so he says, if the Lord can't help you, how am I supposed to do anything? And she answered him and says, uh, uh, this woman said to me, give me your son and we may eat him today. Oh, come on. Come on, tell me if this earth and this planet has gotten to the place of cannibalism. We're not there. There's nothing to fear. Don't be worrying. We, we have an abundance of food. We have an abundance. No matter what the world says, we have an abundance. Here she says, the, the woman said to me, she says, give me your son today that we may eat him and we may eat your son tomorrow. So we boiled my son ah, and ate him. And I said to her on the next day, give your son that we may eat him. But she went and hid her son. So they ate the one lady's son that, that she hid her son because she didn't want to do what she told the other woman to do. And it's, it was devil. Cannibalism was taking place. The king got so disturbed and he was so worried. He says, this must be Elijah's fault that all this calamity is coming uh, to us. And so the Bible comes along and it says, the calamity must be from the Lord. And then in chapter 7, verse 1, we see Elijah comes along, and he says, hear the word of the Lord. I love, I love Elijah. Elijah was, was, man, he was radical. He looks at the king's face. He looks at the people's face. He says, hear the word of the Lord. We need to hear the word of the Lord. He says, tomorrow. Everybody say tomorrow. That's right. Tomorrow. Remember, we're talking about hope for tomorrow. Tomorrow, he says, at this time, a sea of fine flour would be sold for a shekel, and two seahs of fine barley for a shekel at the gates of Samaria. In the matter of one day, from cannibalism to having abundance and being sold for pennies on the dollar, all of a sudden, it was amazing. He spoke these words. Could you imagine when he spoke those words out, what, what the people were thinking? As a matter of fact, the Bible comes along and says, so the officer whose hands the kings lean answered the man, 
man of God and says, look, if the Lord would make the windows of heaven open, could this thing be? He says, even if God did it, could it even be? And then he says this, and he says, in fact, Elijah comes along and says, in fact, you will see it with your own eyes, but you will not eat of it. So could you imagine what was taking place in that day? By tomorrow, wow, there's going to be abundance. By, wow, you're going to see it telling the, the, the man who was assistant to the king, but you will not partake of it. So we're going to take a look now in verse number 3. Now there were four leprous men. These guys, not only did they live in a land where there's a famine, not only did they live in a land that was in lack, they were now uh, outcasts who lived on the outskirts of town. So if there was any food, if there was any water, if there was any possibility of eating anything, they weren't going to get it because they were outcasts. They had no right. They had no ability to get to the city. And it says, now there was four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? That's what I want to talk about a little bit here. We're going to learn a few things from the lives of these four outcasts on how to have a better tomorrow. Because they begin to share some things with us on how they had a better tomorrow. The first thing that I want to share with you that when they were sitting there, they were open for a miracle. They had... To be open for a miracle. You and I have to be open for a miracle. We have to believe that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have to believe that God is in the miracle working business. We need to believe in the supernatural. And they be believed and they were open to a miracle. They had vision for living on the inside of them. They had openness uh, uh, in their life because openness is the key to the miraculous. I'm going to say that again. Openness to God is the key to mir the miraculous. And we need the miraculous in this day that we're living in. We can't afford just to be passive. We can't afford just to just go, go in life and, uh, as uh, like as case or Ross or whatever will be, will be. We have to be men and women of God that are going to stand up, that are going to rise up and have that openness for the miraculous. If you look to tomorrow as if it's all gone, you will never have a great future. If you are always looking for tomorrow as being bad, as being negative, as getting worse, we will never have a great future because we will always be chasing the negative instead of chasing the possibilities that God could do something great. Because we're always looking at the negative. We're always looking at the bad things. We're always, we need to be a people of faith. We need to be open to a miracle. We need to uh, believe that the openness is, is the key to the miraculous. So these, so these lepers come along and they're, they're there at the gates. They say they were in the famine. They said to the, one another, uh, 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 shall we just die there? And if we sit here, we will die. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the armies of the Syrians. They said, you know what, let us surrender if we stay here, we're going to die. If we go there, you know what? We may die. And then they said, if they keep us alive, that's, that's faith. They're saying, you know what? If they keep us alive, you know what? Then we're going to live. We shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Basically, they're saying, you know what? We're going to die here if we don't do anything. So we might as well go. Let's go. If they keep us alive, wow, they're going to keep us alive. Let's, it, man. It's a win-win situation because we know that our God is going to come through. Openness to the miraculous. What about Mary? When the angel of the Lord came down to Mary, the Bible says that she was chosen. The angel said, you are chosen and highly favored of the Lord. Highly favored of the Lord. You know what it means? That there, she was not the only virgin that was on the table to be chosen. There, if, you, if you're chosen, that means that there's other options. So she was chosen. Maybe, maybe there was others that weren't open to the miraculous. But she says, let it be unto you. Whatever you want. She was telling the angel, whatever you want, I will do. I will surrender. Not only uh, her, but what about Joseph? He had to be open to know that his girlfriend got pregnant by God and, and the Holy Spirit and, and all that. It's like, wow, he had to be open to the miraculous. And we look throughout the Bible. There's so many people throughout the Bible that they were open to allow God to use them for the miraculous. So be open to a miracle. The second thing I want to take a look at is they were speaking faith over their situation. 
They were speaking faith. Hey, if they keep us alive, we're going to live. I, I believe that's faith. They stepped out of faith. They were speaking faith. They said, let's do this. Let's make it happen. And so they were speaking faith over their situation. Church, we need to speak faith. We need to be speaking faith over our Church, we need to be speaking faith over our city, over the valley, over our state, over the nation, over the world, that God is going to come through. God is up to something. God's going to move in a powerful way. People are going to flock to God because where else are they going to go? They need to get God in their lives. And, and, and so we need to start speaking faith that no harm is going to come against us, that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. All those that rise up against us shall come to, to shame. And his promises are still still stand. His promises are yes and amen. We, we know the promises of God and knowing we need to start speaking faith over our situation in this time, in this day that we live in, in order to have hope for tomorrow. Another story in the Bible in First Samuel, the 14th chapter. Things were crazy again. Israel, kind of their, their armies had been defeated. They, they, they were kind of like uh, scattered all around. There was a remnant of armies. Saul uh, had one sword and his son Jonathan had another sword. That's all the weapons that they had. And they were coming against the uncircumcised Philistines, the giants, who always came along and tried to put, put God's people down and try to intimidate them and try to make them feel like they're less than. I think sometimes people come to believers and say, no, you can't do that. It's not going to happen. So Jonathan was waiting for his dad, the king, to do something about it, and they weren't doing anything. It was just like nothing was going on. So Jonathan made a declaration to his armor bearer. Now get this. It's just Jonathan and his armor bearer. Jonathan had a sword, and his armor bearer is probably carrying the sword and then giving it to him when he needs it. That's all that, that, that they were. That's, it was just him and the armor bearer. And he says these words in 1 Samuel, the 14th chapter, verse number 6. And Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be. He said, you know what, it may be. Fear says, oh, I, I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, no, those, the uncircumcised are too big. The giants are too, they're too crazy. It may be that the Lord will work for us. He was opened to the doors of possibility. It may be. I'm speaking it out. It can't be. Let's, let's believe God. Let's just trust God. We can't just sit here. We can't just do nothing. It may be. That the Lord will work for us. For nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. He just had that faith. I am believing for the supernatural. I am open to God to do what he needs to do. We need to step out on the maybes in our life. Maybe God is going to come through. Maybe I believe it. I, I know we need to step out and believe that God is going to do something amazing. We need to speak faith over the situation. What about the, the, the story of uh, when Moses sent out the, the 12 spies? Go, search the land. Search the land I'm going to give you. And see if it's not flowing with milk and honey. The 10 spies go out. They come back. They begin to start off about talking how, 10 of them saying about how it is land flowing with milk and honey. But then all of a sudden they begin to get into the negative. They didn't believe God. Oh, but the giants are big. We're like grasshoppers in their sight. We can't do this. We can't make it. We can't. But then all of a sudden, Joshua and Caleb. Joshua and Caleb were believing God for the miraculous. They were open to God moving on their behalf. And they said, no, no, no. We can take it. We can take the land. We can overcome it. And all of a sudden, it was the majority that infiltrated the rest of the nation of Israel, millions of people. And God says, you know what? No one of doubt of this generation will enter into the promised land from 20 years and under, from 20 years and older, will not go. But Joshua and Caleb, they will go into the promised land. Why? Because they were open for God's miraculous. They were open for God to have faith and speak faith and speak over the situation. 
And we know the story that they go into the, the promised land because they stood their ground. It may be. It may be. It's going to happen. God's going to come through. God's going to make it. We're going to speak faith over the situation. And the last thing I want to share with you today is this. We need to move forward. We need to move forward. It, it, it's not about standing still. It's not just about uh, uh, taking and being undercover and not doing anything and not making anything happen. We have to move forward. We need to take an effort on our part, and it's called work. We have to do something about it. You know, when we were assessing the, the situation all week long, at the very beginning of the week, I told our team, I said, you know what, we need to be prepared to have a better worship experience online just to be prepared. And so we began to move, in, and as, as the weeks went by, the CDC spoke, and then the city spoke, and the state spoke about the different things that were taking place, and we were kind of praying about it. We met on Friday afternoon, uh, assessing what uh, precautions, what measures, because you know what, as a shepherd, my job is to protect the sheep. My job is to protect you, and no matter what measures we take, we need to do that. So what we did is like, okay, Saturday morning, we gathered together. Saturday morning, we started filming. Saturday morning, we got uh, stuff prepared. Saturday into the evening, we started editing. Into the evening, we started doing. Uh, Pastor Isaac, on Friday night, he was here with the worship team uh, until uh, uh, 3 in the morning. Last night, I was editing, and we were editing and doing whatever we had to take. Because it we're not just going to sit back and go, oh, well, it's just. No, no, we want the best worship experience for you. We want to make sure we do our best. Not only, this is, I love this. Not only do we have a great worship experience for all the adults, but we have a special C3 Kids worship experience. It's going to be at 12 o'clock. So parents, after this worship experience, go get your kids, gather together as a family, and there's a special just message just for your kids. That's how much we believe. But it took work. We had to do another video for that. We had to prepare things for that. We had to get things ready, but we need to move forward. What did the four lepers do? What did the four outcasts do? The Bible says in 2 Kings 7, 5, and they rose at twilight. Oh, come on. They rose up at twilight. They rose up early. Uh, they, they got up. They said, you know what? We're going to get up. We're going to do the best that we can, and we're going to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the camp of the Syrians, to their surprise, no one was there. What? Now, I don't have verse 6 up here, but I'm going to read it to you from my Bible. No one was there before the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots, a noise of horses, and a noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the kings of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the Egyptians because they, they knew that the kings of Israel couldn't do it by themselves. So they hired the Egyptians and the Hittites, and they're all coming for us. And they heard this noise roaring after them like, a, like it was a great attack. And then verse 7 says, Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact. Their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. They left everything there. These four lepers walk in. It's like, what's going on? When the lepers had came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into, into one of the tents, and they ate and they drank, and they said, wow, they had clothing, they had gold, everything to themselves. Four men. They say, no, no, no this, this is not good. We need to go back and tell the king that just like Elijah said, there is an abundance. Tomorrow you will see an abundance. So they go. They tell the king. The officer of the king goes to the gate first to to, to, to make sure that as everybody was going, coming into the city, that there was order. And the Bible says that everybody came and the man, who officer of the king, he was trampled. So the prophecy that Elijah said, you will see it with your own eyes. He walked into the abundance. He saw it with his own eyes, but he did not partake because they came and they trampled everyone down. Wow. How amazing. The abundance was there. God spoke. There's hope for tomorrow, people. There's hope for tomorrow. You look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all hope was gone. There was hope for tomorrow. You look at Daniel and the lions, but there was hope for tomorrow. You look at all, 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 the, all these people in the Bible that in a matter of a day, bam, things changed. So don't lose hope. Don't lose hope in this time. Don't, lose, don't, don't, don't drown yourself 
in the, the news and what's next and talking about that. Uh, you should be talking about more of God and how he's the miraculous and how he does amazing things and how he's going to come through. We're going to see revival take place. So I just want to let you know that we love you. We love you and we believe that there's hope for tomorrow. We're going to assess the week. We're going to see what's taking place. Day by day, things are changing. Uh, maybe we will have church next week. Maybe we won't, but we will let you know. You need to get on uh, uh, our Facebook. You need to get on social media. You need to go on YouTube. We're going to be po posting uh, uh, what we're going to be doing. But we want you to know that God loves you. God cares about you. And you know what? We have no fear. We don't have to worry about anything because God is for us and he's not against us. So if you're there out there today, I just want to let you know, all you need to do, if you don't know Jesus Christ, you just need to pray out, cry out to Jesus. Just let him know that, you for, uh, if Jesus, forgive me my sin, come into my heart, and, and, and allow him to be Lord and Savior of your life, and be born again, so you can become a child of God, so the promises would account to you, as well to me, so we could gather together and do what we need to do. I want you to share this this, uh, this feed. I want you to share it with people. I believe it's a message for today, Spe specifically for today, hope for tomorrow. We're going to continue this series. Uh, tonight, Pastor Donna is going to be ministering the Word of God, and we're going to be streaming that as well, so we want you to join that as well. But we want to let you know that we're going to go back into some worship. But we want to thank you. I want to thank you. This is Pastor Eddie on behalf of the whole team here. We love you. And let's go out and continue to love people to life. God bless you. Wasn't that a powerful message from Pastor Eddie on a hope for tomorrow? We're going to go back into the sanctuary in just a moment for worship. But I want to just talk to you for a second. I was thinking about the, the parable of the talents in Matthew, the 25th chapter. And the man who received one talent, he, his response was, you know, Master, I, I knew you to be a prosperous man. You reap where you do not sow and you gather where you do not scatter seed. But I was afraid, so I hid my talents. And I was thinking, you know, a lot of us think that lack of belief is the opposite of faith. But, you know, it's, it's really fear. This man, he knew that his master was a prosperous man. He prospered in, in supernatural ways. I mean, he, he gathered where he did not scatter seed and he reaped where he did not sow. And so how did that happen? But this man was still afraid. He said, I was afraid, so I I hid my talent. You know, a lot of us have irrational fears, and we may have seen that a lot in the media with uh, the frenzy over the coronavirus. I mean, you can't buy a, a roll of toilet paper anywhere. You know, I was at the store the other day just to grab some paper, toilet paper, because I was down to one roll in the house. So I just needed out of necessity. But I was out there and I went to the first store, no toilet paper. Second store, no toilet paper. Third store, I found some toilet paper, but it was in these little four roll packs. And I'm not just gonna buy four rolls. So, you know, I, I, I bought about three of them and I was buying toilet paper out of necessity, but still I was walking around like I'm one of the, the, the toilet paper hoarders over here with a stack of toilet paper. I mean, out of fear, it causes people to do crazy things like hide your talent from your prosperous, Master, how many of us are hiding our talents from God? God entrusts us with uh, what we have. And still we say, God, I know you're a, a prosperous man. I know that you, you, you work miracles in my life, but still, I can't trust you in this. You know, today, I, I encourage each and every one of you, step out of that, that fear cycle and step into that faith cycle with God. Allow yourself to say, God, I'm going to trust you my tithes and offerings today. So as you're at home gathering in and, and preparing your tithes and offerings, we also have a link below. If you don't have the Church Center app, you can click on that and you could also sow your seed digitally in God's house. So as you're gathering your tithes and offerings, I'm going to pray as we step out in faith today and believe God for miracles. Would you join me? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are the provider, Lord God, in miracle and miraculous ways you work on our behalf. So as we sow our seed into your kingdom, we just pray that in our lives, Lord God, that we would reap where 
where we do not sow and we would gather where we don't scatter seed because you are working on our behalf. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I know you're just as excited as I am. Let's get back into the sanctuary for more worship.
Thank you for joining us today for our C3 Church online experience. We look forward to you joining us in person real soon. Until then, make sure to stay connected by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C3 Church Palm Springs. Also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at C3 Palm Springs and make sure to go to our website at c3ps.church. God bless you and let's keep loving people to life.